You were arrested for pursuant to an arrest warrant. It was issued June 3rd. It's charging you with aggravated battery with a firearm. And you have two attorneys here? Or is it three? I'm sorry, two attorneys in the state. Go ahead. Do you want to announce again? Brad Cohen and Sam Zegni for uh, the defendant. Right. Have you had a chance to review your record? Yes, Judge, we have. To review as well. Have you had a chance to review the arrest for argument, counsel? Yes, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Judge, if you notice in the in the um, in the police report or the A form, uh, it, it it definitely isn't probable cause, in my opinion, for um, aggravated battery with a firearm. There's no intent shown in that in that document. Um, there's no words that were said. There's no pointing of the firearm at anyone. Essentially, what the document says and what the witnesses said on that day um, is that the uh, the defendant was being escorted out of the club. He reached for his pockets, looking for money in his pockets. Um, a weapon was pulled, and it was fired at the ground. And after it was fired at the ground, allegedly the ricochet or whatever happened was um, one of the either security guards or um, an employee of the club was was struck in in, in, in his ankle. Uh, certainly, it doesn't show up any intent to uh, injure that individual. I think it is a it looks to me like an accidental discharge. But even if we stepped it up from an accidental discharge and said it was some sort of reckless discharge, uh, it still wouldn't um, have the probable cause to charge him with an aggravated battery. Uh, with a firearm, there's no witness that says uh, e at least even even a word that the individual would say, you know, like, "Hey, I'm about to do something" or something to demonstrate some kind of intent, other than uh, an accidental discharge. It doesn't appear that there was uh, that there was anything that would have uh, prompted uh, some sort of intent from the uh, from the defendant. Okay. Um, all right. So let me hear from the state. Judge, the state disagrees with with that version of the facts. I mean, this is pretty clear from the arrest warrant. What happened here was the defendant was angry uh, because the victim in this case, who was a, a security guard, told him to put away his gun. He then grew angry. He pointed the gun at him and shot him. The victim this specifically states in the arrest warrant that he had to move out of the way. He was directly shooting at him. Uh, the only reason he got shot in the ankle was because he jumped out of the way at the last minute. Uh, this happened in front of a club full of people. There's video of the defendant with the gun in his hand. He has a prior uh, pending open case right now where he's also with a gun and two people were shot. Uh, so, Judge, we're going to be asking for no bond on this. And, Judge, I'm not, you know, Judge, I'm not sure if you're reading the, the narrative from when the first police officer went out and took statements. Um, but the first police officer that went out and took statements, it clearly says that he shot into the ground. Um, there's nothing in the first statement that says anything about uh, that um, he pointed it at anyone. Um, and I don't know what the follow-up is, because all we have is the narrative, the police report narrative, uh, that specifically says um, that there was something uh, about money that fell out of his pants and there was a witness his name uh i won't mention his name but he advised security staff that he escorted the individual out um and the individual had a firearm out and shot towards the ground um that's what the the, the independent witness paid 
Yeah, Judge, and, and this is Sam Zane on behalf of Mr. Williams. Uh, two points of clarification here. Uh, the the, uh, the alleged victim sustained a gunshot wound to the ankle. Um, I don't know how you how you survive getting hit in the torso by jumping out of the way and get shot in the ankle. And that's buttressed by the fact that the original witness said that the firearm was discharged towards the floor. That's the first point. The second point is that the allegations of the previous case, uh, two, two people were shot, but I Mr. Remember, Mr. Mr. Zeng, I remember. Not the, it's not the shooter. Correct, Judge. This is a bondable offense. Uh, if there are issues with bond, it should be addressed by the, uh, the, the court, uh, the circuit court judge with regards to the first case. Aggravated battery with a firearm is not a non-bondable offense. Uh, just so the court knows that we've been in communication with the government. We surrendered Mr. Williams to Metro Dade Detective Soto yesterday uh, at T- TGK. We, we self-surrendered him. He wasn't arrested out and about as a fugitive on the run. We self-surrendered him just like we did last time. He's not a flight risk. And we believe a reason of, of the standard bonds appropriate in this case. And, and Judge, if I may add to that, I mean, this is an ad. We let defense counsel know that he was supposed to turn himself in last week. We gave him the opportunity. They didn't turn him in. He, he, as far as we were concerned, was a fugitive for the last week. Uh, there was a, the arrest warrant was signed, apparently, uh, I believe it was on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, they, they've been looking for him, and they, they turned several times where he was supposed to turn him in. They canceled. Um, He's here again, now. Judge. What's the yes, Judge. This is an aggravated yeah. battery. He's entitled to a bond. The standard bond is $10,000, and that's what I'm setting. The $10,000 bond with the hold for the division judge. Case number... Hold him for case number F twenty one four one three five B, and you'll see your judge tomorrow, nine a.m. All right. Thank you. Thank uh, one you other thing, I need to stay away from the victim. Robert. One. Whoa. What's this victim's name or initials? Is it X? I'm sorry. There's a witness and a victim. No, judge. The victim is initials I D. I is an N. D is in David. Okay. Chief, the, the victim's initials are F D. The alleged victim, Sam. Come on. Can I have the Thank name, you, the name of the the initials of the alleged victim or what? <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Judge. Judge. Oh, I have it here. Thank you. Your order to stay away from the victim whose initials are F D. No contact with this victim either directly, indirectly, in person, in writing, by telephone, or through third parties. And you must stay 500 feet away from his home, school, and place of employment at all times. You want me to order him to stay away from this club as well? Yes, Stay away from the King of Diamonds establishment at 7020 Northwest 72nd Avenue in Miami. So while this Judge, is can you, ending, you can't go there. Yes? Judge, can you also tell Sam to stay away from there as well? She doesn't have jurisdiction for that, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> you have good lawyers. This is a serious matter, and you're going to see the division judge tomorrow. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Judge. Thank you.